Good afternoon. My name is Hannah, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I would like to welcome everyone to the CoStar Group First Quarter 2023 Earnings Call. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. Now, Cindy Aiken, Head of Investor Relations, will read the Safe Harbor Statement. Cindy, you may begin. Thank you, Hannah. Good evening, and thank you all for joining us to discuss the first quarter 2023 results of the CoStar Group. Before I turn the call over to Andy Florence, CoStar's CEO and founder, and Scott Wheeler, our CFO, I would like to review our Safe Harbor Statement. Certain portions of the discussion today may contain forward-looking statements, including the company's outlook and expectations for the second quarter and the full year of 2023, based on current beliefs and assumptions. Forward-looking statements involve many risks, uncertainties, assumptions, estimates, and other factors that can cause actual results to differ materially from such statements. Important factors that can cause actual results to differ include that are not limited to, to those stated in CoStar Group's press release issued earlier today and in our filings with the SEC, including our most recent annual report on Form 10-K and subsequent quarterly reports on Form 10-Q under the heading Risk Factors. All forward-looking statements are based on the information available to CoStar on the date of this call. CoStar assumes no obligation to update these statements, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. Reconciliation to the most directly comparable GAAP measure of non-GAAP financial measures discussed on this call, including, including EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA, adjusted EBITDA margin, non-GAAP net income, non-GAAP net income per diluted share, and forward-looking non-GAAP guidance are also shown in detail on our press release issued today, along with the definitions for those terms. The press release is available on our website located at coastguardgroup.com under Press Room. As a reminder, today's conference call is being webcast, and the link is also available on our website under Investors. Please refer to today's press release on how to access the replay of this call. And with that, I would like to turn the call over to our founder and CEO, Andy Florence. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for CoStar Group's first quarter 2023 earnings call. Revenue for the first quarter of 2023 was $584 million, or 13% growth year over year, coming at the high end of our guidance range and above consensus estimates. I'm very pleased with the growth of our commercial information and non-residential marketplace businesses, which delivered 15% year-over-year revenue growth in the first quarter. I'm also very pleased with the progress we're making in building the new homes.com, which I believe will become the best online residential marketplace in the world, bar none. We started the year strong with net new sales of $80 million, our second highest sales quarter ever, and a 17% increase over the first quarter of the prior year. Apartments.com achieved the highest net new sales quarter for the second quarter in a row. LoopNet achieved outstanding results in the quarter with a 100% increase in net new sales over the first quarter of last year. We hit a new high water mark in traffic to our marketplaces in March, Monthly unique visitors totaled $94 million for the month with Apartments.com, Homes.com, LoopNet, Lands, BizBuySell, Bellbex, Bureau Loco, Business Immo, and all of our marketplaces contributing up to tens of millions of unique visitors. Apartments.com continued its impressive run with another outstanding quarter. Apartments.com revenue was $211 million in the first quarter, climbing to 20% year-over-year for the first time since the first quarter of 21. Net new sales bookings were at an all-time high, breaking the record set just last quarter with an increase of 110% over the first quarter of 22. Apartments.com, while very successful, has millions of apartments that do not yet advertise on the site. We are focused on continuing to grow our sales force to reach this huge potential untapped audience. Our attention to attracting the best talent and excellent onboarding and training of new hires is paying good dividends. Our sales team productivity is up over 40% compared to last year for hires who have been with us less than a year. 
We are committed to excellent customer service, and that's a big contributor to our success. The apartment sales team conducted close to 140,000 quality meetings this quarter, which is 24% higher than the same quarter last year. Of those 140,000 quality meetings, over 50,000 were in person, a 45% increase over the first quarter of 22. This attention to servicing continues to be well received by our clients as evidenced by our industry-leading net promoter score of 94. The number of properties advertising on our platform continues to expand and is now at a record 64,000 properties. Our customers are selecting higher ad package levels to obtain more leads as evidenced by our average revenue per property increase of 14% over the prior year. The economic fundamentals of the apartment industry continue to move in our favor. The vacancy rate for three, four, and five-star properties rose another 30 basis points to 7.7% in the first quarter. And net deliveries continue to outpace net absorption in the quarter with twice the units delivered as absorbed. Deliveries in 23 are expected to be the highest in over 40 years and vacancy rates are forecast to increase for the remainder of the year. There are currently over 1 million units under construction, with approximately 750,000 of them being at the top end of the market. Pressure on these assets will be intense throughout 2023 as rent levels moderate. We expect vacancy rates to remain elevated by historical standards. All this could create a jet stream-like tailwind for advertising demand. March marked the official rollout of the new 2023 Apartments.com marketing campaign with new TV commercials, streaming videos, and streaming audio commercials. Jeff Goldblum as Brad Bellflower was featured during March Madness and all month across top networks like CBS, Bravo, TBS, TNT, and more. We launched a new social media campaign. Our streaming audio and podcast campaigns have hit the airwaves, and engagements are at an all-time high. We anticipate that our 2023 campaign will yield 12 billion media impressions. The early results of this campaign are strong, with our first quarter unaided brand awareness for Apartments.com jumping to our highest score ever. Apartments.com continues to attract qualified renters to our platform with an average of over 43 million monthly unique visitors in the quarter, according to Google Analytics. Apartments.com is also benefiting from the addition of Homes.com rental area to its network and the tremendous growth in traffic to Homes.com. Visitors to the Homes rental area are up 83% since the fourth quarter of 2022, and those visitors delivered approximately 200,000 leads to our paying Apartments.com customers. That's up 124% from just last quarter. With more content than ever before on our network, including unit-level details and touring capabilities, our lead quality continues to outperform our competitors. Our mobile sessions were an all-time high in the first quarter, with 75% of Apartments.com user sessions conducted on a mobile device. Just five keywords now account for 33% of unbranded search activity on these devices. When the top 376 cities in the United States are examined, Apartments.com ranks number one for all five of these terms 99% of the time. The combination of the kickoff of our 2023 marketing campaign, market conditions, and our larger and more seasoned sales teams helped continue to drive strong results. In sum, I'm very pleased to report that we expect Apartments.com to deliver 22 to 23% revenue growth in 2023. I'm very excited about the progress we've made on many Homes.com initiatives in the short period of time. Last year, we laid out the key milestones for Homes.com, grow, monetize, and scale. The growth phase focused on increasing traffic, engaging buyers and sellers on our platform. Our initial goal in the growth phase was to achieve 25 million unique visitors, while our goal in the scale phase was to reach 50 million unique visitors. 
Traffic to our Homes.com network grew dramatically. We reached 27 million unique visitors in March, according to Google Analytics. Month to date in April, traffic to Homes.com grew 53% over the same period March to date. As of this morning, for the partial month to date, we have already seen 28 million unique visitors to Homes.com network. Unique visitors for our Homes.com network is 88% of above March of last year, and traffic to our Homes.com site is up 183% uh, compared to last year. We are now four times the traffic levels from when we purchased Homes.com almost two years ago. By comparison, two years after we purchased Apartments.com, we had only doubled the traffic. As we continue to build Homes.com and combine single-family residential with rental content from Apartments.com, we can now aggregate our traffic across both property marketplaces. In total, monthly unique visitors in March for our Apartments.com and Homes.com network was 72 million, according to Google Analytics. For the fourth quarter of 2022, Realtor.com reported 66 million monthly unique visitors, while Redfin reported 44 million average monthly unique visitors. According to Comscore, Homes.com unique visitors were up 153% year over year in March. Realtor.com's monthly unique visitors decreased by 20%. Zillow's unique visitors were down 5%, and Redfin's traffic increased 5% compared to March of last year. Alongside our increase in consumer traffic, engagement, agent engagement continues to improve. We now have approximately 1.1 million agents registered in the Homes.com network, up 37% from the first quarter of 22. Active users, or those who visit the site monthly, have increased 64% versus last year. I believe the engagement will continue to improve as we're providing millions of free leads to agents that could generate billions of commission dollars for them under our Your Listing, Your Lead business model. In the months ahead, we're intensely focused on product development, generating proprietary content, and building consumer traffic. Our team is extremely talented and singularly focused on winning. I wish I could share more detail on some of the great success stories, but I cannot for competitive reasons. With the progress we've made to date, I remain confident that we're on track to begin monetizing Homes.com advertising product in the later part of this year. LoopNet was 63 mil- revenue was $63 million for the first quarter, up 16% year-over-year, and accelerating from 12% growth rate in the fourth quarter of 22. Our investment in building a direct sales force for LoopNet is paying off. Net new bookings are up 100% year-over-year, which is directly attributable to our larger and more effective sales teams. The productivity for sellers in their first year has increased in each of the last four quarters as new reps ramp and become more productive. Sales of new signature ads are up 27% year-over-year. LubeNet captured record traffic in the quarter with 14 million, av- million average monthly unique visitors to a network of marketplaces, up 12% year-over-year. Year. According to SEM Rush, LubeNet has eight times the traffic of our nearest competitor in March. We're also seeing traffic gains in Canada as our unique visitors for LubeNet Canada in the first quarter are over five times the unique visitors of our nearest competitor there. These accomplishments and investments reinforce our position as the most popular place to find a space and give me confidence in our ability to achieve our target of 18 to 19 percent revenue growth in 2023. As we continue to focus on international expansion, with our revenue, the revenues there expected to exceed 80 million in 2023, by revenue, our international business now ranks number four behind Apartments.com, CoStar, and LoopNet. We now have over 500 international employees, including 200 researchers and 130 sales representatives. In Europe, we currently operate in more than a dozen cities in five countries with aspirations 
to expand our CoStar and LubeNet products into most of these major markets. Currently, CoStar and LubeNet are only offered in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom. We believe there's a 30 billion European market for real estate information services and marketplaces, which is roughly the same size as our North American market. A key step to capturing a significant share of that market is building and selling CoStar and LubeNet on a pan-European basis. One of the core unique competencies of our research operations is our on-the-ground field research operations. Our goal over the next few years is to photograph, map, and document all of the commercial properties, 10,000 square feet or larger, roughly 1,000 square meters, in 15 European countries and approximately 36 cities. We will divide each city into one kilometer grids and capture all the relevant building inventory in each area. We anticipate capturing information on more than 1.5 million properties with a combined value in the trillions of euros. We have done this before in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K., and in each instance, these massive efforts have resulted in a profitable and very valuable information asset. CoStar revenue increased $225 million in the first quarter, up 13%. For each month of the quarter, we saw a record number of distinct users in CoStar, and in March exceeded 140,000 distinct users. Usage of CoStar and product engagement continues to grow as evidenced by nearly 6.5 million logins in the first quarter, a 26% increase over the last year. During those user sessions, property searches exceeded 20 million each month and property detail views averaged 15 million a month. Whilst CoStar continues to be the premier product for real estate professionals, uh, brokers, significant opportunities for uh, exist for selling to new customers. We have a 75% plus penetration rate amongst brokerages with five or more brokers and continue to prospect smaller firms with an annual revenue potential of $96 million. In addition, our sales teams are focused on owners, lenders, and corporations where we have a significant addressable market. We believe we have over 51,000 owner prospects, 10,000 lender prospects, and almost 4,000 corporations with 50 or more locations for a total of $1.4 billion in potential revenue. For the first time this quarter, product demonstrations to these aforementioned prospects exceeded those to the broker customers and broker prospects. Overall, we're seeing slightly lower than slightly lower net new bookings for CoStar, but still expect double-digit revenue growth in 2023. We recently incorporated information on 12,600 real estate investment funds and 70,000 commercial properties within those funds into CoStar. The fund information helps clients understand who has capital available to invest into commercial real estate and what sort of product types they want to invest in and where they want to invest. We continue to focus on our banking customers with our lender product. Last month marked the one-year anniversary of releasing our fully integrated solution for lenders in CoStar. Sales continue to be strong in Q1, ending our first year by breaking the 150 total client milestone. These clients span many lender types, including banks, life insurance companies, credit unions, and private lenders, while ranging in size from $50 million CRE portfolios to over $50 billion CRE portfolios, proving a large opportunity moving forward. Our sales pipeline for lender is strong, and we expect to build on that pipeline as the solution for lenders is uniquely positioned for continued growth in this uncertain environment. The value proposition is unmatched. No other company can connect a lender's portfolio to our rich property level information and provide a fully integrated credit model that assesses refinance risks as well as stress tests of portfolio for an economic downturn. We expect, we expect continued sales opportunities due to regulators calling for increased portfolio surveillance by Siri-focused lenders for multiple reasons, including the concern over office properties, rising rates, refinancing risks, and the threat of a potential economic downturn. 
I remain confident in our ability to grow cost our revenue given our mission critical data, ongoing product enhancements, and the continued expansion and diversification of our customer base. Although overall CRE transaction volume was down 51% year over year, 10X continues to outperform the market with a solid 60% trade rate, up three times that of the offline market and up 51% in the fourth quarter of 22. We also saw the average number of bidders per auction on the platform increase to over 3.2 in the first quarter compared to 2.6 in the fourth quarter of 22. In Q1 23, 10X saw the average asset value increase 18% over the last year from 3.3 million to 3.9 million. Average winning bid price increased 29% compared to the prior year from 3.1 million up to 4 million. And the average buyer premium increased 35% over the last year from 71,000 to 97,000. I believe this indicates that our expanded sales force is delivering higher quality assets that investors are seeking even in a price challenged market. With roughly 1.5 trillion of CRE debt maturing in the next 24 months and 700 billion maturing by year end, we expect the continued interest rate driven market shift to drive transaction volume up. 10X is already seeing an increase in momentum in the second quarter with 1.7 billion of inventory coming to the platform, a 44% increase from Q2 of 22. 10X remains the go-to platform for accelerated asset transactions, which buyers, sellers, brokers, lenders, and special servicers benefit from as the markets continue to shift. Our lands business is focused on creating opportunities for our rural land clients to capture more leads for their priority properties for sale with signature ad opportunities. This business continues its consistent profitable growth with 14% year-over-year revenue growth. STR has achieved a record sales quarter with the highest net new in its history and delivered 14% year-over-year revenue growth on a constant currency basis compared to the first quarter of 22. We're on track to launch our new benchmarking product this month and execute our plan of migrating more than 175,000 users to the CoStar platform. This release will open access to new clients, including owners, hotel operators, and brands that will enable execution of our integrated strategy. Owners will have clearer visibility into asset performance, market performance, and competitive landscape. This insight is invaluable for asset acquisition, repositioning, and dispositioning. Operators will have access to data and tools to better forecast, budget, yield manage, and identify demand drivers and supply implications. Hotel brands will have a full suite to support and develop teams, franchise owners, relationships, and management contracts. What's not to love about all that? Overall, higher interest rates and increased economic uncertainty have reduced transaction volumes in the market and impacted prices since the second half of 22. As I mentioned earlier, transaction volumes declined by over 50% year-over-year in the first quarter of 2023 in the commercial real estate markets. In addition, we're now seeing asset price declines for seven consecutive months with valuations off by 8% over that time. The office sector continues to show real weakness, with vacancy rates reaching almost 13% in the first quarter, phantom vacancy rates much higher than that, and it's matching the all-time peak seen after the great, uh, uh, the peak seen after the great financial crisis. With continued weak demand, negative net absorption, and another 58 million square feet of deliveries expected in 2023, we expect vacancies to push higher for the foreseeable future. Not surprisingly, delinquency rates on commercial property loans have doubled in the past three months to 2.8%, and it's probably in actuality higher than that. Overall, sales prices for office buildings are down 26% from their peak in Q1 of 2022. Fortunately, our 10X platform is well positioned to assist with the recapitalization of those properties as they come to market. The residential housing market remains constrained, Mortgage rates are down from their earlier highs at the end of last year, but affordability is still low by historical standards. 
Sales of existing homes tipped higher earlier this year after 12 consecutive months of declines. Sales of new homes have trended higher since reaching a bottom last year as builders are offering incentives like rate buy-downs to clear inventories. Inventories remain tight, which should prevent values from declining rapidly. The retail sector continues to benefit from reduced store closures, steady demand, and minimal new supply. Available retail space fell to a new all-time low of 4.7% during the first quarter, leaving it difficult to find space. Strong market. Industrial net absorption has slowed the first quarter after two years of record high net absorption, and tenant demand is beginning to moderate. At 4.3%, the U.S. industrial vacancy rate is half of the levels recorded 10 years ago, and rents have climbed 10% over the last 12 months, still a strong market. I'm very pleased with the performance of our business in the first quarter. CoStar continues to grow and remain resilient despite industry headwinds elsewhere. Apartments.com and LoopNet show accelerating countercyclical sales success. I am very optimistic about the progress we're making building traffic and value at Homes.com. We're very pleased to see our array of diverse platforms draw in more than 94 million unique visitors in March, and I look forward to reporting 100 million unique visitors before too long. At this point, I'm going to turn the call over to the very capable hands of our Chief Financial Officer, Scott Wheeler. Thank you, Andy. It's a great way to start the year again. Financially, we are certainly on track, if not slightly ahead, where we expected to be this quarter and for the year. With regards to revenue and our revenue growth outlook, which is 13% total revenue growth for 2023. Now, one of our sell side analysts recently pointed out that we have logged 50 quarters in a row of double-digit revenue growth although we actually just completed 48 consecutive quarters of double-digit revenue growth, <laughs> but who's counting? I actually use my favorite AI tool, which I call an Excel spreadsheet, to go back and figure out how many actual quarters we had double-digit growth. So it was back in 2011. So I'm, I am applying AI here at CoStar to our financial uh, results. It might just be I. <laughs> it's a question of my eye sometimes. So revenue by services, CoStar revenue grew 13% in the first quarter. It was in line with our guidance expectations. CoStar expansion into new customers remained strong, with new business sales consistently or slightly above the levels we've seen since mid-2021 after the pandemic. The brokers are certainly facing a tough transaction and leasing environment, which dampens new broker sales and renewal rates, primarily among the very small broker shops. We expect that our revenue forecast will reflect the current market conditions, which would have CoStar revenue growing at 10% for the second quarter and for the full year of 2023. For multifamily, we added more than $35 million in year-over-year revenue during the first quarter, on our way to once again achieving 20% revenue growth. Our bigger sales team is giving us the capacity to reach more and more prospective customers that have never advertised with Apartments.com. The number of paid properties increased by 8% in the first quarter of 2023 on a year-over-year basis. This is the largest volume increase we've seen since the second quarter of 2021. In addition, we're seeing more and more customers upgrading to higher-level ads versus those that are downgrading to lower-level ads. This net revenue contribution from the positive ad-level mix is now back to the levels we saw last during the pandemic surge, which was the second quarter of 2020, which were certainly good, strong, high levels. Looking ahead, we expect these trends to continue with rising vacancy rates and increased productivity from our recent Salesforce expansion classes. So we're now forecasting revenue growth, as Andy said, of 23% for multifamily for the year and for the second quarter, up from our prior guidance of 20% revenue growth for 2023. Loop net revenue grew 16% in the first quarter, up from 12% revenue growth in the fourth quarter of 2022, thanks to the success of our dedicated loop net sales team. We expect 18% revenue growth for LoopNet in the second quarter of 2023, with a full-year revenue growth that we now expect at the upper end of our 18 to 19% guidance range. Revenue from information services increased 12% in the first quarter at the upper end of the guidance range, with strong results from STR and revenue contributions from our growing European businesses. 
We expect revenue growth for both the second quarter and the full year of 2023 to be 10%, slightly above the 7 to 9% full year revenue growth guidance range that we provided in February. Our first quarter residential revenue came in at 13 million as expected. Estimated revenue for the second quarter is around 12 million, with our full year 23 revenue expectations remaining unchanged at $45 million. As a reminder, we've not assumed any revenues from Homes.com advertising products in our 2023 outlook. Other marketplace revenue contracted 4% in the first quarter of 2023, which was actually an improvement from the 10 to 13% first quarter revenue decline we expected a few months ago. This is the trade rates for 10X that improved sequentially in the first quarter, providing the extra revenue versus our forecast. We now expect revenue from other marketplaces to grow in the mid to high single digits in the second quarter, and we're increasing our full year revenue growth estimate to 11 to 12% based on the better than expected first quarter results. Adjusted EBITDA was $123 million in the first quarter, $7 million above the high end of our guidance range. The outperformance was primarily attributable to our strong revenue performance and the timing of marketing spend in the quarter, which we expect to reverse as we move into our peak marketing season in the second and third quarters. Our adjusted EBITDA margin was 21% in the first quarter, one percentage point higher than our guidance. The size of the sales force in total remains largely unchanged from where we were at the end of 2022. The apartments and LoopNet marketplace teams grew in the first quarter sequentially, offset by modest attrition across the rest of the sales force. Our focus for the rest of 2023 is to continue to increase our sales teams in the marketplace businesses, including apartments, LoopNet, lands, and residential. Our contract renewal rates remain in the 90 to 91% range, while the renewal rate in the first quarter for customers who have been subscribers for five years or longer remains strong at 95%. Subscription revenue on annual contracts increased to 82% for the first quarter of 23, up from 81% at the end of 2022, and 80% a year ago. Both CoStar and Apartments.com have our highest annual subscription concentration percentages, and as these two products grow in relative size, we see our total subscription percentage increasing along with it. With a strong start to the year, we are reconfirming our revenue guidance and raising the midpoint of our guidance range. The new revenue range of $2.465 billion to $2.48 billion implies revenue growth of 13 to 14% for the year. Second quarter 2023 revenue is expected to range from $603 million to $608 million, representing revenue growth of approximately 13% at the midpoint. We are also reconfirming our adjusted EBITDA guidance and raising the midpoint of our guidance range. The new adjusted EBITDA forecast range is now $505 million to $520 million. Our investments in the Homes.com residential marketplace are yielding excellent results, and our investment plans remain unchanged from what we communicated in February. For the second quarter of 2023, adjusted EBITDA is expected to be in the range of $118 to $123 million, indicating a second quarter adjusted EBITDA margin of 20%. Before we move to Q&A, I want to reassure everyone that our cash and our investments are safe and sound, with no adverse impacts from the failure of the Silicon Valley Bank and the other recent banking turmoils. We also have nothing related to First Republic Bank, by the way. We maintain a very conservative treasury strategy that keeps our cash with only the strongest financial institutions and in the safest short-term investments. We actively manage our deposits to maximize interest income within the confines of our low-risk investment practices. In the first quarter, our $5.1 billion of cash earned a net interest of approximately 4.1% for the quarter, producing approximately $44 million of net interest income after deducting the interest expense on our debt. Projecting these results for the rest of the year is expected to yield net interest income of approximately $195 million, which is well above our prior estimates. We're raising our outlook for non-GAAP net income per diluted share to include our latest estimate of net interest income. We now expect non-GAAP net income per diluted share of $1.21 to $1.24, an increase from our prior guidance of around 15%, which is $0.15 per diluted share at the midpoint. So that's about wraps it up for me. You can see we're in a very strong financial position as we head into the second quarter, and our growth, our investment, and our profit plans are all on track for another great year. So with that, I will now turn the call back over to our operator for a little bit of Q&A. Hannah, back to you. Of course. 
At this time, I would like to remind everyone in order to ask a question, press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press the pound key. Thank you. Each analyst is permitted to ask one question. The first question comes from the line of George Tong with Goldman Sachs. You may proceed. Hi, thanks. Good afternoon. You trimmed your CoStar suite full year revenue growth guidance from 12% to 10%. How de risked is that outlook given the current state of the commercial real estate market? Um, and then related to that, you mentioned smaller broker weakness. Can you comment on the performance of your other customer types at, Co at CoStar Suite, as well as um, the latest pricing trends that you're realizing? Thank you. Sure, George. Thanks for the question. So we do take a quick, uh, close look at all of our different uh, customer sectors and how we're performing. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the sales that we're making into the growth sectors, uh, owners, investors, lenders, are at, if not slightly above the levels we've been doing over the last uh, four to six quarters. And you just really see this one isolated sector that is the smallest broker shops that are being impacted by uh, the downturn in transactions and uh, reduction in effort and potential layoffs in, the, in that industry. So we've taken a close look at that. We reflect those trends. We think that you know, the second and third quarters uh, are going to be rough in the industry. I think those are pretty well known economically. And so we we uh, ride along with that sort of expectation and would hope that it gets, starts to get better in the latter part of the year. So we build all that into our forecast, uh, and we see that uh, in reflected in the 10%. So with, with the number of sectors holding up as strong as we have and with the bigger sales force, uh, we don't see this as being something that would be as disruptive as what happened in the pandemic or anything previous for us. So we're we're pretty confident with what we've got built in so far. And then in pricing? the question on pricing, yeah, that we're – we're following – we follow uh, inflation-level pricing, so our uh, – as inflation levels come down, then we reduce the, uh, the increases that we put in for uh, renewals to just stay at uh, the rate of inflation. And that's all Got it. Very helpful. Forecast. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Tong. The next question is from the line of Peter Christianson with City. You may proceed. Good afternoon. Thanks for the question, um, Andy. Uh, just wondering, if, can you can you uh, uh, elaborate a little bit on how you're seeing the pipeline for 10x, uh, the relationships that that you've built, I guess, since since acquiring the asset, um, and 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 how you see that that pipeline evolving, I guess, as, as potentially we hit more distress over the coming months, years. How do you see that evolving versus how 10X was prior to being acquired? Thank you. So surprise, surprisingly, uh, still today, the vast majority of uh, product that's trading on the platform is performing assets. So we are uh, – it takes quite some time from when market conditions uh, become adverse to when you actually see – uh, effectively capitulation and people uh, begin to exit uh, investments that have gone south. So we're still a performing uh, asset platform at this point, but we're seeing, um, uh, you know, less spread between uh, buyer expectations and seller expectations. So there's, there's the trade rates are coming up. You can see the volume increasing this quarter as that happens. And, uh, we would expect that to continue to climb up uh, through the year. We have a much larger sales organization than we've had in the past to be able to capture that opportunity. Plus, we've also completely integrated all of the systems of 10X into the CoStar and LoopNet platforms, uh, so we're uh, dramatically more efficient as we want to take on uh, new assets. We also are uh, more disciplined now on making sure that we do not uh, bring on uh, any assets that the seller does not have realistic expectations for. So our commitment committee um, uh, on the 10X management team is um, uh, very disciplined. So, um, you know, it's it's a, 
It's somewhat awkward. You don't want to see a flood of inventory coming into 10x because it means that the market's gone really south. But uh, uh, with the federal government continuing to work from home, uh, uh, you'll probably see a lot of uh, office assets go down. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chris Janenson. The next question is from Stephen Sheldon with William Blair. You may proceed. Hey, thanks. It, it, LoopNet, you know, really strong booking trends there. Um, so do you think you're at full stride there with the expanded sales force, or is there still a lot more to go, I guess, in terms of ramping productivity? And then can you talk about the demand environment at LoopNet, given the trend in office vacancy rates? It seems like a great environment right now. But do you also think there could be a point where vacancy rates trend too high, some property owners capitulate and just assume they're not going to find tenants and therefore reduce ad spend? And I guess essentially is there an optimal range for office vacancy rates from your perspective to maximize demand at LoopNet? And if so, what do, you, what do you think that is? Yeah, I don't think there's an upper end. Um, what, what we see in the past, you know, so we've been selling – advertising solutions to commercial uh, property owners for quite some time now, from when it was in books to when it was in CD-ROMs to when it's uh, on the Internet. And when when the market conditions get really awful at the upper end of high vacancy rates, what you find is that uh, the assets recapitalize, a new owner comes in at a much lower cost basis. Uh, the cost of our advertising is de minimis or irrelevant in the cost, the context of the cost of the building, and they're actually very aggressive in advertising. So the biggest advertising spends I've ever seen is from uh, is from owners who picked up bankrupt assets, uh, new owners who picked up, and they're basically coming in there with lower price points than the than the remaining uh, properties that hadn't yet gone under because they've got a lower cost basis. So I think there's no uh, uh, I don't believe that there's any upper end to vacancy rate and demand for uh, our asset, uh, LubeNet. Um, obviously, right when someone's going bankrupt, they stop, but it's it's made up for by now the new owner uh, coming in aggressively. Um, I actually think we have a lot of room to go. I, I look at uh, one or two other businesses overseas, and I look at what they're generating in revenue for commercial real estate advertising on the Internet, and um, – I uh, just um, interpolate that by GDP, and it suggests we have uh, a doubling, uh, tripling, a quadrupling of revenue to go. Um, so I'm uh, looking forward to continuing to grow the LoopNet sales force and continuing to optimize our pricing models um, and to increase the functionality. And I also think that uh, moving LoopNet pan-European will have a huge benefit. I spent a lot of time listening to focus group interviews with corporate users and, and, and investors who move uh, across borders. And as we provide a solution that crosses borders, I think that will increase demand for assets marketed on LoopNet, which would be another positive uh, uh, demand driver. So if you, have, if you can't tell, I'm bullish on LoopNet and remain bullish on LoopNet. As you should. Though it was once a competitor. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Sheldon. The next question is from John Campbell with Stevens. You may proceed. Hey, guys. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking our questions. Um, the first one is, I guess, the two-part question here. Um, so first off, a great job on the homes.com traffic ramp. That was a really impressive early start for you guys. But so first, on the on the roughly $53 million of sequential step up in sales and marketing, <laughs> Um, how much of that was tied to Resi? Well, yeah, so we we haven't indicated how much residential marketing spend, uh, as you can appreciate, John. So uh, I think you see every sequential corridor will get more and more marketing come in in total as all of our marketplaces get into the more of the rental uh, and high volume seasons in the second and third quarter. But uh, we'll just keep keep uh, the discussion to overall company at this stage. Okay, and I guess just broadly, you're expecting that sales and marketing to step up sequentially throughout the remainder of the year, even into 4Q? Yeah, so our, I, I think what you'll see is our pattern will we'll step up in second quarter. We're going to step up even more in third. 
uh, as we get closer to our uh, product launch in residential, then, then you'll see clearly we'll be preparing the market for that. Uh, and then I think what we'll see is the fourth quarter will be higher than most of our fourth quarters previously because we have an additional platform that we're doing brand marketing for now this year versus prior years. So you see a bit more of a, uh, of a spend that carries in later in the year than we've had before because of the addition of the new platform. So hopefully that helps. But if you see anyone okay, from yeah, Soho, tell them that we're spending all the money in Madrid. <laughs> Will do. Uh, and then, Andy, back, uh, I guess, big picture question for Resi. Uh, you know, as you look out the next couple quarters, what would you offer up as key milestones you, you'd like to see the team hit? Well, for the next uh, – there's a lot going on. I mean, it is a very full plate of initiatives, and there are, there's, you know, well over a 1,000 people working on the initiative right now. Uh, I think – that the traffic numbers remain uh, a key metric uh, that we're watching, obviously. Um, as we mentioned, we plan to uh, uh, begin to monetize the platform at the very end of the year. And, uh, you know, the first 1,000 uh, customers on that platform are probably the, the most important uh, customers that you may one day have hundreds of thousands. Uh, or millions, um, uh, the first 1,000 the most important. But I, I would stay with, uh, I would just stay with the simple uh, traffic numbers. Now I, I believe that uh, critical traffic numbers are what we talked about before: 25 million, which we've crossed; 50 million, which we're moving towards. Um, uh, beyond that 50 million mark, uh, you, you really have what you need to produce some compelling marketing solutions for your clients, and you can really begin to monetize. So uh, at the, I think the numbers you correctly, um, you correctly observed that uh, I would say that uh, one of the biggest risk factors for homes.com has just been reduced with these results today, uh, if, if you're watching. A lot of sense. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. The next question is from the line of Ashish Sab Sabadar with RBC. You may proceed. Uh, thanks for taking my question. I just wanted to drill down further on the on the CoStar suite. I was wondering if you can quantify what percentage of the revenue really comes from the smaller mid-sized brokers uh, where you might potentially see um, any kind of headwinds. And then uh, just to follow up, Andy, on your comment around uh, the, the prospects, uh, owners, lenders, and corporations, uh, which represents a $1.4 billion opportunity. I was wondering how much percentage of the revenue comes from those right now, and how should we think about that trajectory uh, for the rest of the year, but also over the next uh, few years? Thanks. So let me take the first part of the question there, Ashish. When you look at our, our broker mix uh, in CoStar, a little over 35% of our CoStar revenue is from the broker pool, and then about 25% of that uh, group is representative of small, what we call the one or two broker set. So that gives you, you know, 25% of 35%, so it's roughly 8% uh, of that pool. So it's, it's pretty limited, uh, limited exposure uh, for now in the, in the small broker set. And to be clear, they don't all go away. Uh, it's really, having watched this a few times, it's the folks who are uh, 67 years old who decide to step out at the at the uh, at the cycle point. So it's a it's a subset of the group, uh, and there's some obviously some other uh, constituencies. So the majority of our revenue today is the owners, uh, lenders, uh, and a, a smaller component is the uh, corporate users. Obviously, we have government in there. We have vendors. We have a whole number of other sectors. Uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, those, while the brokerage side of our business continues to grow, I believe that those owner, lender, uh, corporate user sectors are going to be uh, by far the, uh, the biggest growth driver. And uh, uh, coupled with international uh, uh, demand over the next three to four years. So uh, I think uh, 
I think this is a trend that's been going on for uh, two decades now. So I think when we went public, 85, 90% of our revenue was brokers. Uh, so while that revenue has continued to grow, it's now only 35%. So as it continues to grow, I'd anticipate five years from now, it'll only be 15%, uh, 10, 15% of our revenue, something like that. That's great. That's very helpful, Color. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Sabadra. The next question is from the line of Mayanet Tandon with Needham. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Andy, of the 15 countries or was it cities that you mentioned, uh, the focal point in Europe, is that going to be an organic initiative or do you think you could buy assets in these regions that could help accelerate uh, the traction there to be able to penetrate that 30 billion opportunity? And when should we expect meaningful revenue contribution uh, from this uh, initiative? Yes, yeah, so um, there definitely are acquisition opportunities in Europe. There are very few companies that in Europe that are none that do um, exactly what we do on the CoStar information side. They're more on the marketplace side, uh, similar to LoopNet or to Homes.com. There's not a lot of Apartments.com players over there. But on the CoStar side, we really stand alone. One of the key initiatives is to build the comprehensive information grid by doing the field research and proactive research. That is a two- to three-year process. Uh, so then you see meaningful uh, you see significant meaningful uh, uh, monetization on the co-star side really two to three years out. Uh, on the loopnet side or on the marketplace sides, I think it would be a little bit sooner, uh, probably 18 months uh, or so. But we have our head down doing what you know we've done many times before, which is capturing the whole all the content the core content, and the wonderful thing is uh, we seem to be the only people in the world that like to go out and do something uh, that hard and crazy, and then it becomes very valuable once we go and do it. We're, we're pretty good at it. And the wonderful thing is the technology has never been a, uh, better than it is today uh, to do what we do when we build inventory. So, uh, uh, you know, we can use machine vision now to look at aerial photographs, compare them to the millions and millions of other properties and aerial photographs we've got. We can very precisely direct our field researchers um, and make them very, very efficient as they move through these markets. Uh, so it'll, it'll be a good adventure, and I think there'll be some great returns for it. And I remain convinced that uh, the market for uh, the, the demand for 10 markets is 20 times the demand for one. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tandon. The next question is from the line of Jeff Silver with BMO. You may proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, this is, uh, I guess, a follow-up from the prior question. You've obviously got a sizable cash balance. It's great to see that you're generating more interest income off of there. But when do you think you might put that cash balance to work, and where would that cash balance be working? I think uh, uh, we, we – I believe that our organic initiatives are not going to exceed our uh, – our EBITDA generation, our cash flow generation, I, I, we don't see anything like that at this point. Um, so it's really acquisition opportunities. Uh, we're, uh, you know, we have uh, been very patient. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, there's better value opportunities. And as I listened to Scott describe, uh, 5.1 billion in, in cash. Uh, uh, I believe it's a wonderful time to have a great balance sheet as other companies uh, may run into some troubles. Um, and so both in Europe and the United States, uh, we believe there are opportunities. We continue to have conversations. Um, uh, you probably have read in the media about a number of conversations we have had that were substantive. Uh, we did take a four-week holiday uh, from <laughs> after the la latest round of uh, uh, media reports, but there's still a lot out there, and uh, 
Uh, I have meetings this week, but you won't know where. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. Thanks for the call. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Mr. Silver. The next question is from Heather Balski with Bank of America. You may proceed. Hi, thank you. I, I appreciate you taking my question. Um, I, I'd love to ask you about the, the residential piece. Um, you, you talked about where you are on a traffic basis. You know, there's there's less risk going forward. Um, I know you're you're not kind of telling us specifically your your sort of spending plans for this year and beyond this year. But you know, if if things continue to progress at the rate they they do and the pace they do. You know, kind of how do you how do you see things evolving at a high level? Can you can you just kind of help us kind of see your path between now and and 2027? Thanks. And are, are you specifically discussed uh, uh, talking about investments or combination of investments and traffic? Um, well, traffic. I guess I guess the the, in, the investment side and 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 how it's tied to your thoughts around how sales progress. Yeah, so um, uh, I think this the remainder of this year, I believe, is fairly predictable. People have a good idea of what we're doing the remainder of this year. Um, the wonderful thing is is that um, we have pulled uh, just a small percentage of the levers we have to grow traffic. So some of the things that I think are uh, – I, I think there's more traffic, op- uh, traffic generation opportunities ahead of us this year. Uh, that we uh, than than those that are behind us, so it makes me feel pretty good about our ability to hit our second traffic goal uh, as the year uh, comes to a close uh, or just slightly thereafter, which would be way ahead of schedule. Um, uh, I'm very excited about our uh, uh, simple uh, monetization strategy at the tail end of this year. I think it's straightforward. I think it's compelling. And I think we can spin up a sales operation to support it uh, pretty quickly. Uh, as we, uh, my hope is that uh, as we can begin to show uh, uh, proof of concept uh, against that sales initiative the later part of the year going into 24, then we can do what we did with apartments.com where we are showing uh, proof of concept and results and invest against that proof of concept and result into what is a huge market. So it's too early to say, you know, what we're doing in 24, 25, 26, and 27 uh, for investments. It'll be a balance between what we're showing in revenue results versus, um, you know, what we're willing to invest into the business. So, but... uh, it's probably 60%, 70% of my time right now, <laughs> and I'm, I'm pleased with uh, I'm pleased with where it's going. And uh, it's a lot of work, but we have a great team and uh, feel pretty good about it. But obviously, we're the underdog as we were in the early days of Apartments.com, and so you you have to be coming up with some unique ideas and different strategies, and, and I think uh, feel pretty good about that. What we've got going on. Appreciate the color. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Balski. The next question is from Ryan Tomasello with Stiebel. Please proceed. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the question. Um, just a two-part one here. Clearly, a lot of confidence in the resiliency of the business, but just given the uncertainty that's out there around macro and theory, it would just be helpful to Hear your thoughts around your willingness to uh, pull expense levers under the scenario that the sales environment does weaken more than than you're hoping. And as a follow-up um, on the homes.com traffic trends, maybe you could elaborate a bit more, Andy, on, on what levers you've leaned on so far to drive that traffic growth in terms of, I guess, SEO, SEM, synergies with apartments, and what remaining levers you have to pull that, that you just alluded to. Thanks. Yeah, so I don't think we want to go into too much detail in our traffic uh, strategies right now, um, just for competitive reasons. Um, uh, I would uh, point out that we have the greenest 
the residential real estate portal around uh, because our load time of the home page is uh, uh, ranges from four milliseconds to uh, something like 30, 24 milliseconds. So uh, that gives us a BA uh, on Google Analytics for performance time, which means you consume less electricity and generate less carbon, and we only generate 0.22 grams uh, per uh, uh, 10,000 loads. So uh, super efficient, high performance uh, is a key piece that, that we've done. Um, uh, and I hope that obfuscates what we're doing in strategy for, <laughs> for traffic. <laughs> but uh, I think we've talked about some of those uh, traffic strategies and some of it's self-evident, like what we haven't yet done, which we're going to be doing, and the things that we've done in apartments that are uh, in the past successfully that we've talked about today that have not yet been done with homes that are self-evident. Um, so, um, so. Yeah, there's, there's more ahead than there is uh, in the rearview mirror on the traffic performance. But congrats to Jerry Rogers and his team for such a, a great performance, and that, that benefits your SEO growth. So uh, in our willingness to – if the if the market continues to degrade um, significantly, sure, we're always – you know, we're uh, always uh, responsive to any need to sort of pull back on uh, initiatives where – um, we're not seeing a, a market perform because of severe economic conditions. You know, we we uh, are prepared to do cost containment uh, efforts, but uh, realistically, you know, in the very worst markets over the last 35 years, uh, you know, we've rarely seen. Um, I think the worst we ever saw was a two percent, three percent decline when we were. Uh, 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 only uh, selling co-starter brokers. Uh, we are so much more diverse now, and we have so many what I believe are counter-cyclical drivers, whether it be lender or 10x or marketing uh, for high asset value uh, items, uh, that I, I uh, think it's unlikely that we'd be in a situation where we have to really pull back because of the economy. Though I'm quite impressed by uh, uh, this particular down cycle. <laughs> And the potential. Yeah. Well, you notice, I mean, we look very closely at the last disruptions that happened, the pandemic in 20 and the great financial crisis more than a decade ago. And as you proceed through each of those, you notice in the in the last down cycle that our revenue growth didn't slow at all. And we see nothing uh, even as disruptive of that this time. And you just look what's happening with apartments and LoopNet proving to overbalance counter-cyclical that our, our revenue growth is not – uh, going to slow at this balance in a down cycle, and we don't see that coming uh, at all. And we do see a lot of clear data underneath, as you might suspect, on what's going on. So our portfolio is much stronger as even three years ago, and I think we saw that in the results uh, that we announced today. Thank you, Mr. Tomasello. There are no additional questions waiting at this time, so I will turn the call over to Andy to wrap it up, wrap the call up. Wow, we finished seven minutes early. Um, well, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us for our first quarter 23 earnings call. We look forward to speaking with you again on our second quarter call on July 25th, 10, uh, 2023 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So thank you very much for participating today, and have a good evening or a good day if you're in Asia. Bye-bye. This concludes today's conference call. You may now disconnect.